what is a router sled, and why do you need one in your shop? That's what we're going to answer on today's episode. My name is Robert. I'm the owner of Daily Woodworks, where we build custom furniture, and then we teach you how to build great furniture um, on this channel. This is the Clean Cut Woodworking Router Sled. I purchased this sled um, a few years ago and now am really now starting to really use it to its full potential. And I wanted to do a demonstration for you today on how to kind of set this guy up, how to use it, why you might want one. And then we also have a special offer where if you go to the website and buy this router sled, you can get 5% off using the promo code daily. So before I really dive into that, let me tell you about where this came from, why you might want this one over other ones, and why this is just so much nicer than one you can make. I've made one and I've used it and it served the need adequately. You can definitely go that route. So Brent Jarvis, who owns Clean Cut Woodworking, was tinkering and he came up with this router sled design. All linear bearings, super smooth, and he came up with this design, posted about it, saying, hey, I built this thing to serve my needs, and then a lot of people were like, this thing's awesome, we want one, myself included, so we purchased it, and then we were like, dude, this is awesome, and it has turned into... I don't know if it's still his side business or now it's his full business, but that's the kind of company I like to support is guys in their garage trying to live out the American dream, build a business, support their families, making American made products. So that's why I have this guy. And now let's really dive in to the meat of this episode. So this router sled operates on a linear rail with crossbars to, to move. So it's very smooth, and you can actually adjust the tension on these ball bearings a little bit. And you can use it to flatten what you need to flatten. The crossbars are available in lengths up to 60 inches. And these, I custom ordered mine to be 72 inches long. I believe he can go up to 10 foot long. But the cool thing about this is you might be limited to width based on your crossbars, but you're not limited to length. As long as you have a flat table, you can kind of daisy chain these guys down to serve any length of boards. And in the B-roll, I'm going to be showing you um, an eight foot pecan slab that I flattened where I did actually have to move these down. So as far as using this, this works with any router. You definitely want to use it with a plunge router. So my router that I'm using is, is really a lower end skill router. I think it's about $140. I got it on Amazon for the price. I think it's a great all around router. Um, one way to support this channel is using the affiliate links in the description or on the blog post. Um, if you're looking for just a cheap router to use in different applications, this is a great one. It served me really well. Um, so what I've done is I've basically just permanently mounted my plunge base here. And then you can see I've got my fixed base permanently mounted to my router plate. And I just switch it back and forth for how I use it. And then I've got my uh, little palm router that I use for pretty much everything else. The next thing you need is a router collet extension. It's this guy right here. They are not expensive at all. But the reason you want that is because with the plunge and the way this raises up off your workbench, you're going to need that extension to do it. As far as your cutting bit, this is a two inch, again, cheap bit. I think it was $20. I bought these whenever I was doing a lot of, uh, I was going through a bunch of reclaimed lumber and making tables for a restaurant out of it. And there were tons of nails in there that I couldn't get out. So I just bought a bunch of these that I could throw away whenever they got destroyed. And that way I wasn't ruining 50, $60 bits. But with clean lumber like I'm about to use now, that nicer bit is going to leave you a nicer finish. So you'll want this setup right here. Again, links to everything is going to be in the description. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use this guy using this piece of pecan that I have. As you can see, it's got a pretty bad twist in it. Now, here's one reason that you would want 
a router sled like this. My shop is 700 square feet, which is bigger than a two car garage, but if you're doing this kind of stuff professionally, that's not a lot of room for your big 16 inch planer, your big 12 inch joiner, things like that. So where this guy excels is now I can do essentially any length board, in my case up to about 25 inches wide, get it perfectly flat without the need for those tools. So this can replace those tools. Obviously, if you've got the room for those, those are gonna be faster and theoretically give you better results. But if you're like me in a small space, but you need to flatten some boards, this is a great option, especially if you're working with live edge stuff. Uh, the pecan slab that I did uh, a few videos back, I ended up taking about half inch off of that to really get it nice and flat. So now we need to, one, unplug our router. Two, I've already got this set up. Basically, I leave this set up as it is. It goes into your half, half inch router base, and then we're going to lock it down. Okay, and then this guy is going to go into our router. So this base does not come drilled at all. So, well, it's drilled out with a two inch hole in the center. So you'll have to take off your base and then mount it yourself. The screws just countersink in its acrylic plate. It's super easy to do. I actually have this set up for my uh, Fez Tool uh, OF1400 router and this router. It's just this one I can leave permanently set up on here. So no need to have two routers going. And then we're gonna plunge it down and you can see I'm actually a little bit too high here. So I either need to pull out my router extension or pull out my bit a little bit to get to the depth I need. So I did lose a little bit of depth based on the custom mounting bracket that I made. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is put a th piece of three quarter inch plywood below this and then I'm going to use my handy dandy hot glue gun and some shims to really shim that up. My Polk workbench is nice and flat, so I know I can trust that. But we're just going to raise it up just a little bit. All right, so I've got my board shimmed up now so it'll hit wherever I need it to hit. And then I'm going to attach these down. Now I'm sure there's going to be some of you thinking, it's like, oh my gosh, like that's not the proper way to do it. It's not fully supported. You're right, it's not fully supported because we haven't done both sides yet. Um, this is all 18 mil plywood. It's sitting on the workbench. Again, we're not dealing with thousandths of an inch in woodworking, maybe one twenty-eighth of an inch or something like that, or one quarter of a millimeter if you're communist. So this is perfectly sufficient for what we're trying to do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these lined up right there. We wanna make sure our router extends over the edge over here. Because see, if you go too far, I don't know if you can see that on camera, uh, you might go over the edge. He does sell stops, but that's, an, that's if you really are just not paying attention. But if you just make sure that your end of the board is over here, come down, make sure the end of the board over here, roughly centered. You lose about five inches, so I'm at 36 inch rails, but I'm losing about five inches of depth or of width right there, so keep that in mind. And of course, these are interchangeable. So I have the 36 inch rails. I'm about to order the 60 inch rails or the 60 inch crossbar so I can do wider tables. So you wanna make sure you have all that done. And now I'm gonna just screw these down to my workbench right there. And then I'm gonna hot glue this guy into place. All right, so I wanna keep my board as thick as possible. So what I'm gonna do is try to get split this this twist as much as I can. So right here, I'm pretty well balanced. It seems like I've got about half an inch there, and this board's only an inch thick, so I might end up losing half an inch on this board just because of the twist. A little bit less there. This one's got a barked edge, so what I'm gonna do is since I've already got that right there, I'm gonna put my shims under that to raise this side up just a little bit more because I'm willing to sacrifice that just to get a board that I can use kind of in a panel of a piece of furniture. 
and I could probably cut this in half and then have, you know, cutting board stock or something like that, but it's already only about an inch thick. So there's not much I can really do with this besides making maybe a nice little box or something like that. So I've got that shimmed up, make sure we're not rocking anymore. And then we're gonna take our handy dandy hot glue gun. So if you don't have a hot glue gun, be sure to check your wife's craft room. There's probably one in there that you could use. All right, now that we are here, we have to set the depth. I went ahead and got this installed. And you can see now I could end this board if I wanted to. So what we're gonna do is start just in the middle. I'm gonna push it down till it kisses and then I'm gonna lock it. Now that I've locked it down, you can see I'm hitting some places, Oop, but I'm not hitting here, so I actually need to lower it down a little bit more. So right there, I'm hitting right there, and then I'm gonna use my depth stop to lock that down. One thing I don't like about that is this has a little bit of slop in that, um, but just kind of, that's what it is. You can see we've got free travel. I'm gonna get everything loose and metallic out of the way. And um, I think I'm gonna move over to my painting booth where I can suck some of this dust out. All right, these big bits like this are not made to be spun at 25,000 RPM. So this goes down to a, about 10,000 RPM. And then based on what I could find, about 1600 RPM is about its max. So I'm gonna do about 1450. All right, I am gonna be wearing a respirator with this and I do have my exhaust fans going. So I know the audio is not gonna be great, but I'm gonna briefly kind of talk, walk you through what I'm doing and then respirator up so I'm not breathing in all this dust. So we have this secure, it's not moving on us. We've set on one of our low points right there. But if we go over here and look, we can see that's taken off a heck of a lot. We want to go up to it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my first turret stop to stop my bit from going too far down. We'll show you how to move this. You can push down on this, but the right way to do it is hold it like this. Because see, I can very easily hold it. It's not going to rip out of my hand. If it does, it does that or comes to me that much. So I can do that and then just pull it as we go. That way I'm not just forcing this guy down and putting a lot of pressure on these rails. They don't bend easily, but with enough pressure, they will. So let's see if that'll hit. Yep, that just barely hits. So we'll lock it down. We're good. We're gonna turn on our router clear of any obstructions. We're just gonna walk it down. Oh, you see where I hit right there? And we're going to go across. And that actually works really well for sucking the dust out of here. See, I've already taken off that little bit. I do need to drop my turret down and lower my router down just a little bit. And I'm going to eyeball that. And I'm just going to come bump this top edge. Come down. Right there. And I'm just going to take that little bit more off this time. And we're going to make a lot deeper pass. So same thing as before. And you can see right here where I've taken, whoops, let me refocus. You can see right here where I've taken off. You can see how it's smoothing that up. And you can see how over here, how I've started to barely kiss it. So that's what we want to do. And we're just going to keep repeating that process over and over. Alrighty, so what I did is I just took my razor knife, sliced this guy. And now, 
pull all this stuff off. And before I set this down, I am going to get the glue off of here just so I don't have it interfere with getting a nice flat board. So now you can see it's flat. I'm not getting any rock there. You can see right here, air, I've got a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off of this corner over here and use that as my reference to get my panel thickness where I want it to be. As thick as this super twisted board is gonna let me do. Let me show you that. So right there, that pencil line is um, about a half inch thick. So that's what I'm gonna use as my reference. And then that will give me a half inch thick panel all the way down. You can see over here, I'm more like three quarters of an inch thick. Um, but that'll give me a panel, so I'm going to flip it like that so I can reference off my starting edge. And then I will have a little bit of waste because this little corner over here is less than half an inch thick. But that'll be okay. Um, I'll just cut that off. Um, I don't even really know what I'm going to use this board for. I just figured it was a good, really wonky board that would be a good example uh, for using this guy. This is really hard to show. You see how my bit is touching right here? I need just a smidge, so I'm going to use my micro adjust. And then I'm going to take that, raise up my micro adjust just a scooch and push down on that and see if I can hit my line. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this whole thing in one pass. It's a little aggressive of a cut, but just to show you that you can if you're in a hurry. All right, if I did everything right, I should end up with almost a perfect uh, half inch thick panel. And I've gotta plug this guy in. So I went ahead and re-glued it down and now Let's see what we can do. So if you can get your board or slab flat doing this, I can edge join it with my track saw and we'll be perfect. <laughs> And there you have it. We now have a half inch thick board that has been surfaced on both sides, ready to edge joint, ready for our project. And ready to go. It's nice, it's flat, it's consistent. And I've got a little bit of chatter on this back side that didn't fully take off. But that's okay, you don't always have to do this. This would be the back or inside of my box that I was gonna build. This would be my show face, it's perfectly flat. And that shows you what you can do with this router sled. Most of the time I use it to clean up epoxy and just smooth up a slab. This was in a very extreme example of a board that was otherwise trash, but now 
have a nice little project panel that I can do something with. So this concludes the demonstration of the clean cut woodworking router sled. If you're looking for a router sled, there are several good ones out there. This is a great one um, that is definitely worth looking at, definitely worth buying. Um, again, I do have a 5% off coupon code, my last name daily, that you can enter at checkout on Clean Cut Woodworking's website. I do get a small kickback from that if you use that, but you also get 5% off your order. Um, it's win-win for everybody. And it's, it's a great product from a small business, and that's the kind of guys I want as sponsors or supporters of this channel. Um, so check it out. This really is a great tool that can add some lot of function to your shop, especially if you're tight on space. If you've made it this far, then I must have held your attention for however long this video ended up being. So if I've earned your subscription, I would appreciate it. If I've earned your like, I would appreciate that as well. All the product links are in the description as well. Most are going to be affiliate links, so that's another way you can support the channel. And then on a final note, if you have any questions or if I didn't cover something or something's unclear, leave a comment below. I try to read every comment and I'll do my best to answer your question in the comments below. And of course, you can go to cleancutwoodworking.com, ask your questions there, full great customer service directly from the owner of the business. So that's what you want, right? Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.